Yeah, and un unfortunately, that means the, uh, the the recording starts with ours ultimate. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, but who cares? Okay, so today I'm going to talk about uh, what makes uh, how do characters differ from one another? Characters in fighting games, which sort of be going to be like preliminaries to any kind of character archetype talk we might want to do in the future. Um, just before we get into it, it's little philosophical preamble, because I, I think it'll be actually useful for today. So one thing's differences, one thing is characters. So if we're talking about like uh, what what makes a character or something, because this will be something we'll talk about sometimes. Um, you can have definitions that are like exclusionary or inclusionary. I'll just use a quick example. For example, you have like a, a Shodo is, has like a Shoryuken, Fireball, Tatsu. You have like an inclusionary definition, then you'll be like, okay, he has those three things and a command grab and a Rekka, he's still a Shodo. If you're exclusionary, you're like, uh, he, ha he has a command grab? No. Ow. Some kind of mixed thing. Away. I don't think that's particularly useful. So, two other things one can do. Can have family resemblances, where it's more like, um, okay, he's got a DP, he's got a fireball, he doesn't have a Tatsu, well, that's pretty similar to a Shodo still, and just kind of go with that. Is it, ha it does it have like a couple of things that we were looking for. But that also means that another character could come along and he only has a, has a, a DP and doesn't have the other things. Is he still a Shodo? Well, someone might refer to him as a Shoto based on what he does in the game, but probably wouldn't fit what we know anymore. So, um, going even vaguer, you can say, okay, as long as the game plan is kind of similar to the Shoto, the tools don't even need to look all that much like that, as long as it somehow works out that sounds vague it's more like a communication thing but uh, i think that's sort of the best way to do it basically what i'm trying to say is that if we're talking about differences today they can be hard or soft whatever your preference is and we can talk about that it's all permissible we can even be nihilistic about this and say uh, there just aren't archetypes there's there's not even moves there's just stuff that's fine this is also legitimate okay but that's just the differences part. What we're actually going to talk about more is characters, i.e. what makes them special. Kind of what do they do and what draws our attention to them. That's more important. I think if we talk about that, differences will emerge towards the end of the discussion automatically. Okay. So, uh, sorry for the <laughs> long-windedness. We'll start right away unless there's a question good so let's go with um yeah what kind of strikes you as making a character different or in noticeably important in your eyes or something like that and i guess since we normally don't start with vic this time we'll start with vic so you mean what makes hmm. it's like mean Main stuff would be like uh, the, the special or something like that that would make them different or even just novels that defines like how they will be played entirely. Mm -hmm. Is that um, what you look for usually? Partially. The rest is like, is it a wife or not? That's important. Yeah, that's also a difference. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I can go around. We'll just rotate a bunch of times. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> sure, Ezreal, since you unmuted yourself faster than Andela. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I, I definitely say that the first impression, like the optical choice, is very important. Um, as Vic mentioned, some people are drawn to particular archetypes of looks. Some might look for the cute girl, some for the big and bulky guy. 
and that's uh, even out uh, of the actual game and fighting a very big difference. I would, for example, would never play hmm, Earthquake from Samurai Showdown because he seems to have this huge hitbox and yeah, doesn't really fit my taste. And there's already big differences in heights. Like, for example, even in Street Fighter, which seemed for me the longest time being pretty pretty close with the characters, started something like Abigail, who's like a big hulking monster. But you can still fight that with, I don't know, someone smaller like Sakura or something like that. So yeah, the, the frames that uh, appear and the models are actually very important for me in giving the character its unique touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, it's it's actually also important to gameplay how a character is, what kind of body build they have. Like, funny thing that Vic noted last time when we were playing the Team Lolly versus Team Good Taste tournament is that one big problem that Team Lolly has is just doesn't have any reach. <laughs> They've yeah. got stubby little legs and arms, so they're not hitting anything. So so. And, well, if you play a big, tall character, prepare to be comboed. In older games, that usually meant everyone had an infinite on you, and you only, so you're bottom tier. But, uh, yeah, just, uh, that's, that, that is indeed a thing. Um, Andela. Oh, uh, yeah, I agree as well. The difference in design is really important to, like, start out with a character to me, because, um, yeah, people are drawn to different things. Vic is drawn to waifu and waifus, and I'm drawn to cool things. And my definition of cool is sometimes weird. But uh, the other difference that's really important, and to me more important, is like gameplay stuff uh, as to how the character plays. Because sometimes, even if I really like how a character visually looks, if they play weird or in a style that I don't like, the characters, even if they look cool, and even if I would love to play them, I'm just like, eh, I don't wanna. <laughs> So that's like the more important part, the second, the second look, to say. Yeah, yeah. That I'll just add like a little bit to aesthetics since we, I think we're basically almost done with that part, and then we'll start talking more about gameplay things. So um, there's definitely also stuff like, I mean, we did talk about body types and that sort of thing, and your hurt boxes, and all, and I guess also hit boxes, right? Because lollies have small hit boxes. Um, but uh, there's also like art choices that go into characters where you're like, okay, I guess this guy has the following moves, right? Um, if somebody looks like a main character, then they're, they're, they probably have a dragon punch, stuff like that, right? So um, that's also kind of important when you're looking for a character or vice versa, the, that the character is, uh, is how the character is presented, right? It, like their design is supposed to say something about their moves as well. Especially if you don't have too much time to select them in an arcade or something. So there's like uh, tropes, you could say. You know? Like uh, I, I picked the easy example and in, in, in like the text chat I have a bunch of Yaido characters. I took some that were less noticeable, but most of these have like a sword behind them, not drawn. You know what they're gonna do. <laughs> That's... Uh, kind of uh, helpful as well um okay then i guess like uh, uh, da, 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 da. Let's, uh let's let's do some more basic stuff before moving on we sort of talked about this a little bit when we were talking about uh charge characters but like uh, i guess part of the game feel is um also what sorts of inputs you get to do right so uh Definitely. anyone yeah anyone other than Ezrael have something to say <laughs> <laughs> about <laughs> uh, about about like uh what sorts of uh, things you find unique or what you like to do with uh, with inputs there's not combos though so you can totally segue into combos because this is related i feel 
like mm, Bitcoin do? Usually for me, it's like um, the the I really like Rekas stuff because uh, I don't know. I when I first started playing fighting games a bit more seriously, I just played a few characters, and Rekas seemed to be an easy enough thing to get you started by just picking up the game and playing something. You can just do the Rekas, and you get some damage, which always felt nice. But in some games, you can also do more with the Rekas, like uh, Naoto and BB Tag. If you enhance the Rekka, you can dash cancel it or jump cancel it and do some crazy cool combo stuff with it. But it's still, if you just play normally, quote unquote, or like you don't know much, you can still just do the Rekkas and get a bunch of, uh, get a bunch in quotation marks of damage if you don't know what you're doing because it's so nice and simple. That's why I like feel, feel drawn to Rekkas personally. Mm hmm. Yeah, I kind of get that. Like, um, after I trained, like, uh, doing 360s from different positions, playing a grappler and catching someone with, like, a circle motion feels really satisfying because there's, like, a real, uh, sort of, how do you say, um, um, uh, uh, uh haptic feedback <laughs> when your circle reaches its conclusion and the other guy starts spinning towards his death <laughs> so it's uh, just uh, i mean that's the thing with moves in general right like if you do an input and if the game is not cross tag battle then the move on screen actually looks a little bit like something that fits with the motion that you're inputting right so um that's a that's kind of uh kind of nice it's like a little kind of uh, a feedback of where you're going on screen and what you're doing with the input and um that feels good i think yeah it's important that's why input diversity is important not not like to you you can do moves and balance them in all sorts of ways um inputs are one way of balancing them of course because like if you have to change direction with an input then it'll automatically mean that it's harder to perform in time to something that doesn't mean the input's necessarily difficult for no reason um and different inputs will have different difficulties like if somebody crosses you up and you have to do a dp then, um, well, the motion might not work unless you cross DP. Or if instead you have a charge move, then you're like, I don't care about cross-ups, I'm holding down. <laughs> um, and the, the perfect variation, I guess, is people that have a down-down DP because they don't care about cross-ups and they have no charge time. So that's like a way of just having an anti-air be differently balanced just with the input, right? Um, yeah, um, and Vic, anything like that that you've uh, encountered? Mm, for the input difference, not really. There is stuff I, I do like to do. Go like, ahead. Uh, generally, like um, dashing and command grab with like obstacle back. That mm -hmm. feels good. Uh, now I kind of like to do my my rock loops when they work. <laughs> it feels okay. good because you do like some weird movement but that's more specific on input size and character difference i guess uh, yeah but this goes into the character i feel so uh, how do you do rock loops by the way like i mean uh, uh, forward dash into command grab uh, is, is is clear that's like forward and then use the second forward to go into the command grab motion so it's like yeah. not six 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 three two one four it's just six six three two one four which is fun yeah but what about rock loops with uh CL, right? Um, power yeah, CL? we spoke about CL in Merti, uh, rock loops. You do... At this, I, I, I do 3B, 1, 1C, and then like a uh, obstacle back B. And you kind of have to repeat, repeat that in a certain rhythm. It's hard, but it, when you pull it out, it feels really good. Make like, some weird cross yeah. motion obstacle. It yeah, you're almost doing pretzels there, aren't you? I guess, can I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Normally um, I could go for 2C instead of 1C, but I just prefer to make it really different to not have like a... Mm -hmm. Like a, a launcher, like 3C come out 
instead. Yep. Okay. Um. Israel. So, um, so as to not repeat what we've said, stuff about like how st charge strategies work or anything like that. What do you like about doing charge moves? Like they like the the input side of it. I mean, maybe you're like, I just do it because I have to, but <laughs> like uh, anything like that. Um, I definitely do enjoy it, but uh, it's also uh, sh uh, shaping the way you play. Like even if I play a non-charge character, I play him the way I would play a charge character, like always holding back for no reason, because you don't have to do that. Even even though blocking is important, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> one might argue, um, I uh, just do that. Also, uh, there are some kind of archetypes that always seem to be charge characters. Not necessarily if I, by, uh, by looks. We had a brief discussion that m mostly charge characters seem to be not the nicest guys around, but that's, of course, not exactly true. Yeah. It just like, gives like, the character a certain ring to it. Yeah, there's certainly a weird connection between char being a charge character and being like a, either like a criminal or some sort of political figure negative or b or bad <laughs> starting yeah, with like dictator <laughs> yeah yeah and then there's blanca and honda and you're just like what the hell is this even <laughs> a political yeah. motivated sumo wrestler and some weird guy from the jungle yeah or whatever blanca's exact backstory is by now yeah generally like outsider characters or or like the the I don't know, not the main character of the story, yeah. but the cool secondary main character of the story. That's sort of what charge characters end up being. Yeah, um, now that you mention it, from the simple uh, distinction that a charge character is never a Shoto, you actually don't see the, the main guys as charge characters. I never thought about that. Yeah, there is there are exceptions to that, but not for the player one side. So sometimes, uh, this is more for older games, <clears throat> sometimes player two, instead of being like a Ken, was a charge character. Like, I think the first ones to kind of do this are more like waifu games. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, what was the name of that game? Uh, the Queen of Duelist, the uh, second player character, is a blue guile girl, right? So she does guile stuff. There's no secondary Shoto. Um, and you have this also in Arcana Heart, Saki, who charges in every direction. She is the original player two character of that game. But it's um, not really common. Like, it's something that happens sometimes. But other than that, it's usually Shoto, Shoto, church character, somewhere over there. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, especially nowadays where they're really uncommon just uh yeah um so yeah that's definitely definitely a thing and also uh, like if you have some sort of character that has rush punches he's probably a charge character right uh, that sort of thing or guiles like we said mostly yeah there I was are just others thinking about this this weird guy um yeah sorry that i uh, again talk only about charge characters but <laughs> the actual character i was gonna talk now is not one and it freaked me pretty much out so there's a boxer in street fighter we all know him it's uh, known for the european side as balrog and he's a charge character he's the evil guy kind of he likes money he's greedy and there's then there's another boxer and he's the complete opposite it's dudley he's like a gentleman and he boxes in an orthodox way and not with dirty tricks and it freaked me out that Dudley is not a charge character because some uh, moves of him, like the machine gun blow, they are kind of like a charge punch, but they're not charge. Mm -hmm. I still don't know how to handle this guy at any way. <laughs> yeah, My I expectations see. were destroyed and not uh, given <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I guess the charge puncher is usually just do one big punch and the people that go forward and do little multi hits are usually motion characters but I say usually there aren't that many Dudleys out there so um uh yeah like there's there's brawlers definitely that are motion characters but like someone who's like really close to Dudley can't really think of one right now which is sad Dudley is really cool but enough about that <laughs> <clears throat> okay uh so yeah inputs matter so do combos so me and Ezreal are not really the combo people here so um I guess Andile is there stuff that a character can do that has to do with combos like potential how they look like or something that you know specifically from examples that you've seen where you're like oh yeah this is important somehow or you like it mm, stuff like that is hard to pin it on a character basis in my opinion because usually that depends a lot on the game where you have like uh, games where yaido style characters can do things that maybe look a bit different but feel a lot different for example stuff like in Marvel, where you have the magic string, where you just launch people and then you do an air combo after the ground combo and some special move to finish it off. Characters, the combos just look very different, but not because the characters are very different, but more because the game allows for different stuff. While in, for example, like BB Tag, you have people that you can't really do that, just like ground combo into launch or into some special move to finish it off. It just... I don't know, I feel like that's hard to pin down because it depends so much on the game. It's hard to say, it's like, yeah, that character always does this kind of combo. Um, sure, I didn't mean it as like a definitional thing. Uh, uh, I guess to, to give like an example that's like clearer, there's definitely games where the, 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 uh, the combo systems in the game shape what combos look like way more than the characters right but um to to take that example that that i i guess i i pushed for a little bit um having characters that can reverse beat means they do stuff in a certain way right so they'll have their pressure string they're try they'll try to mix their buttons up from heavies into lights or lights into heavies whatever they're trying to do at the moment and will then just continue and sort of throw out all of the moves that they still have but just because of that um doesn't mean necessarily that their combos look the same in melty you have a lot of characters that are really like uh, bam 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 launcher two buttons double jump cancel two buttons double jump cancel and uh, no two buttons grab <laughs> over right but um it doesn't stop like uh see satsuki from uh, jumping and being like okay you punch the guy into the ground and you punch them into the ground again then you do a charge thing and smash onto the ground launching them again then you jump after them and th uh, throw them to the ground with your anti-air move right or or instead of doing that doing the diff more difficult part where you just have this sort of uh, crouching c charge move where you recapture them on the ground and you get to do a few more moves and you kind of stick that together which already feels like pretty different to the uh normals launcher um uh normals double jump normals throw right um yeah. so uh rather than definitionally like is there like a something that if a character does that sort of thing, or a game does that sort of thing, I guess that's fine too, but more characters uh, where you're like, oh yeah, this was actually really fun to do, example. Um, yeah, for that stuff, it's more like uh, this usual melee style combo where you do a bit on the ground, then launch them up and do something in the air just to smack them back down. That feels really good to me. I, I really like characters like that, that uh, keep close to the enemy during their combos and like, hit them up and jump after them instantly and stuff like that. Um, yeah, that were, there's those kind of characters I really do enjoy. For example, like, Blaze Blue, I really like Naoto because he's like the 
fisticuffs fighty guy and beats people up. And he mm -hmm. also has this uh, usual combo thing where you just jump after them after you give them a big uppercut and then combo them in the air and spike them back into the ground after you do your DP upwards and stuff like that. I really like that when you just take them up only to knock them back down. That's uh, the kind of combo style I really do enjoy a lot. Mm -hmm. Same for Aoko in Metal Blood, where you also just jump really high and depending on what moon you do, a third jump in the air and you just yeet them to the ground. <laughs> yeah. Vic, how about you? Mm, difference in combo and how they look and why we like them? Or just what you like in combos? That is like a character thing. Because I do think yeah. that uh, a character's combo possibilities go into what makes a character yeah. unique, right? I totally agree. Like, I generally do look what they, how they look like, then what they do generally in, before I decide who to play. Because if I generally like combos that where I move, like during it, not really a static combo, like. Mm, where you have to like move your character, thing. or where the character is moved through the usage of her moves? Uh, both are fine, I guess. Okay. Like, fun on combos looks pretty fun, because she's moving all over the place, and moving the enemy also, like, all over, like, the stage, too. Mm -hmm. It's pretty fun. It looks, like, not that common, so it's neat. I think a combo, even though, like, a... I never like continued in this version looks pretty nice because you are bouncing your opponent against like the, the the corner like I don't know a stack of potato I don't know it's pretty it's pretty cool yeah mm. yeah the only one that's more stationary like not moving that much is poor CL in my yeah no she's still moving. Quite a lot, actually. Yeah, yeah, she 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 does move. It's just that once you're in the corner, she's like pop, 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 rock, pop, 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 rock, pop, 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 rock. Yeah. <laughs> and even still, there you can like do like a lot of variation on depending what you you want to do. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And it's more about like small. Uh, mm -hmm. Said more about like the melty stuff. It's not that. Melty, everyone is doing that. It's that as the game allow for having like a, a base combo for almost everyone. Yes. It is like that. Yeah. After that, a lot of characters have like way more complex combo you can do. Yeah, uh, that's why I tried like giving an example with C Satsuki because uh, yeah. kind of important to know. Yeah, C Satsuki has like no BNB indeed like that. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I did it. Yes, please do. My thing, as I said, uh, I, I, I noticed because we were talking about CL again. I personally really don't enjoy doing loops, like doing the same thing in a combo bunch is stuff that I really I, I don't like as much because hmm. to me it doesn't feel that cool. That's okay. just a thing I, I noticed while we were talking about CL again. <laughs> well, we'll talk about our characters, right? Because that's what we know. That's that's like uh, as well talking about charge characters. He's just like the expert there, so that's what he'll talk about. And that's fine. <laughs> yeah. And generally, yeah. I do not like loops too, because I'm not into rhythmic combos. I'm not for this <laughs> reason. Yeah. But... I'm not good at it, but I love it. Okuto no Ken comic uh, com uh, combos are great. <laughs> It, it, sure. it, and if you like it, then you start noticing like the differences. And I, I really like Jaggy's loops, even though Jaggy's trash. It, it's my favorite visually when it comes to those uh, infinites. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, by example, like Okuto no Ken Kombo, I wouldn't want to learn then. <laughs> and learning, by example, like Power Rangers uh, loops were well, like pretty annoying and long to do for me like because it's uh, it's rhythmic and it's also like just mashing one or two buttons at least for my characters mm -hmm. so that that's a part i didn't really enjoy on the game okay so um Ezreal. uh you may have more limited experience but 
tree have an opinion <laughs> here. <laughs> yes, of course. Well, uh, as you said, I can't really add that much about combos because I'm just happy. For, for me, it's a combo if I just crouch and put the light punch four times and it says, oh, you have a three hit combo. And I'm like, yes, I did combo. Yeah, somehow um, you whiffed one of those, I guess, if you didn't put four punches and then you got exactly. three hit combo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being realistic here. Yes. Uh, but the more interesting part for me, at least, is about how the combo will actually end. Um, what kind of distance will I be to the enemy and how yeah. will the Oki start again? I like characters who finish a combo with some kind of a clear finisher that leaves the enemy uh, with not an exact idea how it will start. For example, the target combo of Ignis, who, which just stops with uh, I throw some kind of bomb at you and now I'm standing at mid-range and now I can either set traps or move in again. So it gives you more options rather than putting you in your comfort zone as a zoner far back or as a rushdown character very close to the enemy character. And that's the thing I enjoy through the games. Like, I play Soul Calibur. Um, yeah, just, just lie down. I'll get my axe and pick you up again. Or I play Street Fighter and, oh yeah, now I want to be exactly in your face as a boxer or quite back to react to what you do with a dictator. And the combo itself doesn't matter that much to me, but where it brings me at the end in the game plan for the round. Yeah, that's indeed important, like like uh, where, where you get positioned and knock down options. That, that changes a lot about how you approach the entire game with that character. So that good point, yeah. Yeah, that's ex uh, exceptionally true for games with a hard damage exploration. Like, do I really need those additional hits now? Or will I just end it with something that puts me in advantage after the combo finishes? And at some point, it's just not interesting anymore to give more hits, but to give yourself a good position afterwards. Yeah. I mean, I mean, famously, the, the, the difference between like a damage combo and a corner carry combo, right? <laughs> Some characters are blessed with uh, having their B&B &B be good for both. <laughs> that usually helps their tier list position too. But uh, yeah, indeed. So um, uh, you, you guys kind of already said like a lot that, that I'd say. Basically, for me, is if the combo... My favorite combos, and if a character can do this, then I do get interested in them, even though I have like a lower execution than than Andela and Vic, I guess. Um, like, if the combo looks like it shouldn't work, I, if it just looks kind of video game janky, like that's, I kind of like uh, old fighting game combos uh, because of this, but there's also modern games that have characters like this then i really like it like if there's a lot of side switches if the physics doesn't quite work out like my favorite combos so far that i've seen are azrael combos from blaze blue no? central fiction specifically but he could do this to some extent in Chrono phantasma already where you have big punches that are supposed to throw the character across the screen but if you land in such a way that the game first thinks that he, you're on the left and then the right side he'll be flying towards you rather than away from you so he's being pushed into you i.e you can use moves now that wouldn't be possible because the other guy is supposed to be at the other side and Azrael can do this like two three times in a combo and it's just a whirling confusing mess of gravity just saying fuck this <laughs> and uh well gravity and kinetic force and that's what I, what I really enjoy visually. So if a character can do that, that's uh, that's something that uh, that uh, that catches my eye at least. Um, okay. But really yes. enough, you're not playing these characters. Indeed. Um, like uh, I do uh, somehow not pick characters based on combos. Um, I guess that comes with with the lower execution territory. Like I do like to try hard combos. I do train them, but I don't normally end up using them or end up using like a a simpler variation of them. Mostly, I I pick characters because I want to learn how to play a certain kind of style or I want to improve something in my gameplay. So right now. I think my pressure is garbage, 
so I try to pick characters that put me in the situation of having to apply more pressure so that I learn it. <laughs> that kind of thing. So I usually pick like archetypes that I haven't played as much anymore or haven't played as much at all, I mean. Um, and then I don't really think about the combos as much. Uh, yeah, but I do think they're important. It's just that that's not the, the, the first few things I think of when picking a character. Um, uh, I mean, I first wanted to play Tao Kaka and Blaze Blue, right? And then her combos were a bunch of cool looking individual off of every hit kind of different thing with, with was the guy crouching, standing or whatever. Or if you didn't want to do that, are you good at doing three micro dashes in every combo? I couldn't do that, so I had to switch because she can't really do damage out without combos. <laughs> I played Hakumen. <laughs> uh, but okay, sure. Mm. Yeah. So we talked about some stuff that I guess people don't usually connect with characters, even though they're pretty important. Um, stuff that we only mention on the side, I'll also just mention on the side. They are important in some way. Um, what sorts of normals, what kind of buttons does somebody have, right? Especially in games that were combos don't matter as much so where you have to use your buttons way more uh, that can matter a lot like if you just don't like the speed or the feel of certain moves or that that like his sweep just has way too much recovery and too little range that sort of thing is of course important we did say like specials and i guess you could also say supers to some lesser degree are things one looks for usually and that's why i wanted to go with this because a combination of what the normals are and especially what sorts of special moves they have simply because of the heritage of fighting games right um is pretty defining on what uh, you're supposed to do game plan wise now uh not every shodo yaido character plays the same right um even if they have similar looking tools the context in which they are in the game um like what the other characters can do what sort of uh, movement options you have what the systems are etc and the particular frame data and hitboxes of your character are going to alter how you play um like uh i guess i don't want to overdefine that and rather ask you guys uh what you guys uh, like about or think goes into, uh, I guess, a game plan. Um, and uh, uh, I guess I had all the... Yeah, and Dele. <laughs> you have something to say about that? Mm, I'm not sure exactly what you mean now. Do you like mean what the kind of character we like, what kind of game plan they have usually, or...? Um, that's one way to approach it, or from from the reverse to say like, um, this is the sort of things that I think make a game plan come together, and this are some examples that I like. Whichever you like, mm. from the back or from the front. <laughs> well, I think uh, usually, personally, I like... I, I enjoy characters that can do a bit of everything. Wesker? But I don't, <laughs> for example, but I don't really think that I play a lot of Shodos usually, because... The, uh, the character I end up picking is usually lacking one thing, and I'm really annoyed that they're lacking that one thing, but I still play them because they have all the other things I like. Um, yeah. And I never, I don't know any game where I just ended up playing the Shoto, so even though they're supposed to be like the can-do-everything-a-bit character. Um, but yeah, I usually like uh, being able to play rather aggressively while still keeping my enemy on, on their toes, so in character choice, usually like more agile looking characters or we like younger characters, other characters end up picking, not like Yori, Lodi or Young, but char not the old man characters. Even though I really like them visually, I rarely end up playing them because I want to play really aggressively and that's kind of hard when you're really slow. Yeah, I guess if they're old, they have to be furries like Wolf for you to be interested. As I guess. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, like, as an example, Wolves, like, I really like playing him because he can do a bit of everything and the design's also neat. So, um, yeah, that's kind of like the place that I guess I play more aggressively, but 
not full all out aggression with like someone like Lino or something. That's mm-hmm. just all all go in. I really like if I can chill for a second and just shoot a fireball to just see what the what the enemy is like in the neutral. Mm-hmm. Yep, but I'm not really sure what else to say that fits. <laughs> That's fine. Um, Vic, how about you? Mm. I like characters that have some range. I do lo- also have uh, having the choice to be aggressive or not. I don't necessarily like projectile and uh, need a projectile. It's always better if I have one. I like weird ones if, if possible, slow ones. Mm. Physics projectiles? <laughs> Yeah, sure. If there are rocks, that's even better. <laughs> if I can like shoot them or like change up the, the stuff, but that's gonna work out there too. So, uh, but yeah, I generally tend to to like people that have good ranges and can deal with most situation if possible. Kind of <laughs> what Andre said. Don't we need like to be full on aggressive? But don't want to be like full on zoning or if he needs if it if ah let's say that zoning can be fine it just i need to have like some active zoning and not yeah just i mean one or two moves yeah uh, understandable there are boring zoners like that i don't like them either yes. Like, uh, I, I really need to be able to put out things that, that uh, draw, like, uh, imaginary movement lanes for the opponent and then deny them before they choose them so that they run into them. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, that worked. <laughs> if if yeah, I can't exactly. really do that, it's like... Uh, ST fireball, like, slow, slow, medium speed, medium speed, fast. <laughs> it's just... Mm. Yeah. A little the, bit more the, than that, please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is pretty like that's too basic like now, so that's a bit boring. Yeah. Um to me. It takes some skills though, but yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. Like like I don't mind trying to do it right when I do play something like that, right? Like I, I do put some thought into it. It's just that if preferably somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Um Israel, are you there? Oh yeah, I forgot to unmute myself. Of course, I'm here. Um, I want to get back at what you said at the do so at the beginning, like the neutrals that are important for a character. At first, I wasn't really looking for charge characters. They more or less found me because I wanted a character with lots of health, lots of damage, good normals, and since I am not really able to put in the specials anyway, whatever. And those were all usually the charge characters. So if you're looking for a character with high health and high damage in Street Fighter, you're going to end up with Honda, for example, who just has that. She totally lacks other tools like a projectile, but you have to make do with what you got, right? Mm-hmm. So looking for a good uh, value of stats will usually not give you nimble characters, but uh, power characters. Fritz just being another example. So I guess exactly the type of character which would uh, attract Andela wouldn't exactly appeal to me, because usually I don't need or don't like a speedy character approach. Most even slow characters can combo off nicely if they do land a hit from time to time, even though combos aren't that important to me. So yeah, what's important for me and differs greatly on characters is that the normals appeal to me, which is usually some kind of straightforward normals. I don't think I really play a lot of characters that look weird when they fight, at least not weird to me. Mm -hmm. Batista maybe being an uh, exception. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, adding on to what you guys have said, um, uh, I, I find game plans really interesting. In most cases, you can look at a moveset and sort of understand what the character wants you to try, right? Sometimes there are cases where you look at the moveset and you're like, what is the character supposed to do with it? 
and that can go in two directions right you could be like all right uh this looks like it sucks let me see if i can make it work or in the other direction which is like i just don't even know if it sucks it's just bizarre um so i had a case where me and vic were playing eternal fighter zero and um there's this uh a variation of a girl with like like twin tails and a sword but her variation doesn't have the sword um she's unique to that game so she's not from a visual novel and she just had like command grabs but really odd command grabs in a game where people had huge throw protection on wake up and had like some fire spitting move and a spinny move and uh uh she had to do her half circles from back to forward and i was just like puzzled at what this character was even supposed to do and i don't know i played her like for 40 minutes against vic and got pretty salty <laughs> until like I, I i made it work and that was but that was interesting right it was uh, the thing like being like what what was the designer thinking that the character was supposed to be doing on screen with all of those tools combined um, that's uh, something that uh, that I like. Um, I guess uh, segueing off of that because I think that becomes immediately apparent. I think what's also interesting with characters is probably if their game plans are, let's say, provide enough freedom that you can have a lot of possible play styles. This might also not be super character dependent. Sometimes it's game dependent, right? So in Azuka 120%, for example, the subsystems of the game, like the way you can clash and move around, just uh, create this sort of situation where uh, the character move sets. It's a simpler game look, a little, a little simpler than say, I don't know, Guilty Gear. Um, but they allow you to do a lot of things and you can play characters very differently like you can uh, can do rush down or zoning with the same character um uh, yeah I, I guess like um what do you guys think about like uh, uh play style options i mean andalus sort of talked about that already a little bit but um that was more like um I guess basically what I'm asking is how how important do you think it is that a character offers you the freedom to play it in in your own way uh, versus uh, what you see on screen and do you have like an example that you can think of and I guess I'll start with Vic. Who are you gonna start with? Vic. Did I get oh, cut okay. off? My bad. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I was wondering if it was me or like. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so what what the what was the thing already? Sorry, like I got I got it like stand Montel standby. No problem. That there was like no no um, written events. Yeah. So, how important do you think it, it is that a character offers you enough freedom to play it in your way? Um, or that it offers people in general a way to play uh, play it their way. I have different play styles within pos a game plan. Um, yeah. And is are there any examples that you know of that you'd like to give connected to that? Yeah, I think it's pretty important. As I said, like I like switching my my play style like during the match if I can. I like I like switching. Yeah tempo of the match if i can with, with like the same character um, uh -huh. and i think it's overall like better for character goals to have like more freedom uh, with uh, every character like uh, in sort of four like you could have like uh, two dudley or two two set and they wouldn't play the same way like there was definitely like smug dudley was pretty unique as a dudley Mm -hmm. Same as like Punko, Punko set was like Yulo as fuck. When yeah. Street Fighter like, 4 offered play. like a lot of uh, diversity in approaches with characters. And... Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, differently in characters and in the characters themselves, how to play them. So yes. I think that was pretty nice. That's a pretty nice balance to have, mm -hmm. even though most of them are shotos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's worse games that have even more shotos. Not naming any. So. <laughs> um, uh, uh, just real quick, Andele, you already kind of said, uh, said stuff uh, to about this. Is there something you'd like to add? Otherwise, I'll a ask Ezreal right away. Uh, I don't think I really have anything to add. It's like I'm pretty similar to Big in that regard. It's like changing your pace of the match can just uh, in mid game and stuff like that when you have options to play differently. It's just more fun to do. If I can suddenly just instead of running you down again, I can media wake up with a fireball and then try to keep you out for a minute until you get frustrated or leave an opening that I can then exploit. It just makes it also easier to be less predictable if you have like more of those options. To really swap your playstyle, where well, people like, for example, uh, French examples like uh, Kirito in Dengeki Bunko is only rush down. If I back up, there's like no point to it because I just give up my space. So if after the knockdown, you can expect that I'm gonna be on your face. <laughs> there's nothing else I can do, and it's kind it can be fun for a while. But uh, yeah, definitely switching it up is more fun because you just every game can feel way more different because you decide zone a bit more or do you decide to go a bit more aggressive and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah yes as well <laughs> <laughs> um i might be the only one out here but i completely don't care if playing a character means that they will pretty much look similar characters will always have some kind of strong choices to make with or combo starters they can work with and even though characters can be played pretty differently like I can try to rush your face in with a dictator or try to play the reaction game and punish whatever you're trying to do in the end you're going to use the same five or six moves or if I'm playing Guile the same two moves and yeah that, that might look similar sooner or later even though a character like Guile can be played as well in a different way, you will still recognize a lot from it, and it differs more from the player and less from the character. And that I guess it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I. Uh, I guess I have a weird position with that too. I'll just say it's a mix of both instead of getting into it because I want to get to a final question <laughs> uh, before wrapping this up. Apologies, we'll go 10 minutes over time, <laughs> but then we'll be done. Um, okay, I think we talked about um, a lot of aspects that go into making an individual character, what we care about, and what can be cared about, right? Um, so, so now the question is, since I did say this would be like a session that's a preliminary for archetypes, we did cover uh, charge characters already before doing this, but I feel like going forward, this sort of session was more important. Not that we'll do this all the time. Next topic's gonna be something like what makes fighting games fun or something. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, what is an archetype even? Like, everyone's going to have some different ideas about this. We'll probably add to each other rather than really differing from each other. And since that rotation direction has worked, but Andela hasn't said as much. Andela, what do you think makes an archetype? You can say anything you like. You don't have to say everything that you know. Whatever you like. Um, that's, uh, that's like a really broad question. Like, what makes things that they are? It's like... I yes. don't know, what makes a Shoro a Shoro? Yeah, we know what makes a Shoro a Shoro, like a fireball and a Tatsu and DP, but it's still hard to like define. It's like, you can define single archetypes, but like saying overall what makes an archetype, I guess the feeling of the character combined with like gameplay and visuals, they usually put you like into an archetype, because if you look at grapplers, when you look at them, you can usually tell, yeah, this giant-ass guy, dude, he's a grappler because he's going to grab you and throw you around. And this small guy with two knives is not really going to be grappling a lot. It's, uh, I think, yeah, the, like the feeling of a character, when you look at them and look at the gameplay, that's like what makes archetype. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. That's a, a very broad but very functional answer. Yes. I mean, the question is broad, so that is fair, right? Um, Vic? You can also just add to what he's saying. You don't have to invent something on your own. Yeah, because I, I do go with more or less what he's saying too. I think that the feel of the character, they do have to, to have certain tools depending on the archetype. But a lot of, a lot of archetypes of sub archetype, let's say, are just based on feel more than actual tools. Yeah, charge characters, sort of, right? Like, like they're more about so, their inputs, I guess, but then they're something else in addition, but they feel different yeah. to play. Yeah. But it's also like, where, as we, we talked a little recently, like controls characters, power characters, yeah. these archetypes don't really exist. But yeah. It, it's definitely like a, a certain type of character, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly, like, like they're, things. yeah, they, they are indeed less defined by... There are some tools, of course, that are associated with, with them more than others, but they're less defined by that and more defined by what you can do with them during the game, so kind of the game feel while you're doing it. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, sorry if I cut you off and complete your sentence. No. That's perfect. Uh, uh, yeah. That's all I had to say. <laughs> okay. Israel. What makes an archetype? I guess we usually use archetypes for how a character is... Well, that's my cell phone ringing. I'm sorry, I have to get this call. No problem. Okay, that's too bad. I wanted to get the more philosophical people at the end. <laughs> yeah. But okay. Um, I'll just uh, say something like that. I, I, I don't think what you guys said is wrong. Like, that is correct. Um... That's uh, the, the, that is definitely like a big part of it, and I think like um, some of the elements that also go into that is something like um, game design history and historical usage by players. Like what I mean by that is just um, that you can draw kind of a line of where an archetype sort of begins, and there are some outlying ideas that later on become more defined into a character's toolset. So, so the example I put there with the pictures, right, um, was like Iaido, because uh, that's like a, a thing that's uh, not a Shoto, but still has a very uh, defining moves, uh, moveset. Sometimes these are called Bato strikes, but like these uh, Iaido strikes that are kind of like um, medium, up, down, right? The down's usually low. Um, but the first Iaido characters didn't really have this. So, um, not to talk too long about it, I'll just pick a little bit, uh, two or three of these. Um, first guy, like, Ukyo, kind of. He's not the first character of his sword, I think, in the scabbard, but he has, like, this sort of fake-out move where he throws an apple, and depending on what your input was, he'll do strikes, multi a multi-strike forward, where he cuts the apple at, in half. Uh, well, into tiny pieces, I guess, and can also hit you. But he can also just throw the apple and not do it. Um, and he does hide his sword behind him, but that's more like a visual cue, because in fighting games it doesn't matter. Um, and this idea of having, like, these, these sort of fake-out thing is something that gets explored with other Yaido characters later. So this, this robot, Silver Dragon, from uh, Ningyu Tsukai, also known as Metal and Lace, Battle of the Robo Babes, um, is uh, kind of uh, has this maneuver where he pulls out his sword. You can also do it in the air. And he'll kind of teleport, step, and cross up, right? And he can do, I think, two strikes, but he can also do just one, and they'll cross up. So while slow, he just kind of has this sort of thing. And then characters start getting the typical bateau stripes all the way to Johnny, who is really just like, I'm getting into the stance, doing the strikes, doing teleport steps during this. And I guess like Yuzuria is like the archetypal one that just kind of has every single Yaido trick in the book in history and then some. <laughs> so, so like... We're sort of used to defining it around like the bateau strikes themselves. But there are some other tools that these characters have, which uh, 
came along and then came back so that sort of goes into it um just like uh, i'll say something else hopefully as well be back by then but i guess he won't be um any comments on that by the way otherwise i continue you can I, continue I'm yep sure. um there's also something like historical usage by by players right so for example blanca in world warrior um as a blanca ball okay ford that's it um but uh, the way people started using that ball was not just to hit people but also to do like a sort of ambiguous cross up on wake up like you do the blanca ball just as the guy is getting up and you'll be either on the left or right side of them and if you're particularly good with your ranges what you can also do is you do the blanca ball but you do it perfectly spaced that you're close enough to go into a grab grabs hurt in world warrior so i guess like uh, uh, uh some important blanca player called this the blanca train right so so you you blanca balled around you got in did the grab um and other characters then like like clown from from uh fighter's history started having a moveset that was more usable towards the sort of idea like blanca balls where you hop onto people's heads or just spin around in a weird way um blanca himself adopted this then into his moveset too um and and blanca then got these weird hop through th moves and the slide that comes out suddenly just these confusing char uh, character moves right and um uh, yeah so so like um or more modern example which is not really archetype related but um is like uh main guilty gear where you have this weird thing in xr i mean that you can do with like dolphin charge into dolphin and um that's something the players came up with using the systems in the game and that was then not patched out but actually brought specifically brought into and balanced around in later iterations of exard um so what players come up with also kind of goes into how moves get designed and sometimes archetypes or sub archetypes or specific characters within an archetype or just like a new character whatever any option right emerges sort of from that so that's kind of also something i think is interesting and goes into what you guys said um yeah i mean of course there's other thing like input method methods movement speeds health damage do they have mix-ups or not everything right but I, can't, I guess we kind of covered that um anything you guys want to want to add even if it's just something like oh yeah that's kind of like x then you can do so here nope but in that case uh unless there's a closing remark on this i'll sort of wrap this up um i mean we said what we said so topic wise i think it's already wrapped up wrapped up but i did the session the, the layout for the session just so we had kind of a common basis to talk about um when we then do like a session on archetypes because charge characters was easy we just had Ezreal talk so that's okay but um with other characters we're going to immediately get into questions so what makes a move what makes an archetype or something so i thought thought like a session just about that would be better it doesn't mean we're just going to do like archetype sessions from now on like i don't think that's interesting um i do think they are interesting just that we if we only did that stop and uh, it does not going to be the thing so next the next table talk isn't going to immediately be an archetype discussion but uh yeah especially since like vic said we were discussing these characters that are more based around sort of a feel or i guess like a, 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 an approach to a game plan like control power uh the blanca one that i was talking about those are like confusion characters right that uh, have like these weird tools that 
hit at certain times that normally wouldn't hit at those times. There's like a lot of variation in how to make this. Uh, Faust is kind of like a really evolved version of that, Faust and Guilty Gear. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess. I guess that's good, right? Yep. So, yep. Then, uh, thanks for making it out here to. We could have this discussion, and I will stop the recording now.